Good morning. Uh, let us start the weekly review, as always, with the short end of the US curve. Well, we had quite a move in the two year notes, as you can see. The uh, number on Friday made us jump straight through this consolidation area into the next consolidation area. By the way, the weekly charts. Uh, in fact, all the charts are going to be slightly skewed by the contract rollovers that are happening at the moment. Uh, so don't take these levels to the tick. But in any case, you can see that the two-year note short term is vastly overbought. It's above the Bollinger Bands, but you know time will correct that. And we think that any move back towards this uh, 109.08, maybe slightly lower, 109.07, 109.06 will definitely be bought for another leg up towards this area of 109.14. We don't see it going through there. Uh, as we've been saying, these consolidation areas basically show you where the market is bullish, uh, bearish or neutral. It's bearish down here, it's neutral in here, it's bullish up there, but for it to bust through these levels, the market would need to start looking for a cut in interest rates or absolutely no hike for any uh, immediate future, which is unlikely. I think the market, even with a number on Friday, uh, because it is only one number of one month, will definitely wait for more information before it makes a serious move above this line, which is 109.14. So we could have a third wave higher to 109.14, maybe 109.16, get people bullish and stopped or whatever, and then reverse back into this channel. Um, on the dailies, this is very much the same kind of picture. Uh, we find it hard to believe that it's going to go much through the 109.15, 109.16 area with the Bollinger Bands up there. Uh, it, it will probably test it, but fail and come back towards the 10908 area. The five-year note, much of a muchness. Um, again, you know, this is the big test area, 121.19. Um, we think we probably get there. It's there again on the dailies, 121.18 being the top of the Bollinger Bands. We we will probably get there, but we will probably fail and come back towards the 121 area and slightly below. Uh, not much to be done to the two year and five year note. Uh, you want to trade it bullish off the moving averages and off the, um, and off the support at 120.28. Uh, and you want to trade it bearishly above 121.16. Uh, still no change there. The, uh, the, the more bullish contracts are the 10-year note. Even that is not hugely bullish. Uh, we're building some kind of a wedge here. And uh, the Bollinger Bands have started turning slightly up. So that probably indicates... Uh, continued pressure to the upside over the next two or three uh, trading days or even a couple of weeks, uh, but nothing really tremendous, uh, which fits in with the picture of the twos and fives. Ten years can only flatten so much against twos and fives. And, you know, uh, we would not be surprised to see a move up to 131 and a half, 132. Um, but as 132, but really not much more than that. The 30 year is the one that's looking the most bullish, but that is no surprise. It's uh, testing the upper spikes. Uh, we would not be surprised by a move up to 168, but it is very overextended, so we would prefer to buy it at lower levels uh, if it comes back towards 166, 166 and a half or even uh, 167 uh, we will definitely be giving it um, you know, some on the upside but um, we 
we are not really that enamoured with the um, with with buying bonds at all uh, at all levels. Uh, we think that will definitely come back. This is a bullish configuration, but it's not a my God, you have to buy it now kind of picture. Uh, Europeans really shats and bobble doing nothing so let's have a look at the Bund although this is skewed by the uh, contract rollover um, it is at the bullish extremes and it's probably going higher the uh, cash market closed again this is skewed by the contract rollover we would really not be surprised to see 165.50 uh, in the September contract very soon. This is um, the cash market has actually made a new low in yield at 0 0.006. Uh, what is there to say? It will probably test zero at some stage. Uh, there is not much else to be said for it now and that fits in with our view that uh, the European economies are still very weak and there is no reflation there for the time being. Uh, will this change? Yes. Will it change in the very short time frame? No. Let's have a look at um, the, the equity markets. Uh, well, this is, you know, our very short term indicator where we job for two, three, five points. And as you can see, it keeps on coming back to this central exponential moving average, which is at 2098. Um, all dips to 2083, 2085 keep on getting bought. This is, as you can see, how many times we've tried it once, twice, three times, four times. 2083, 2085 is the area that you buy and anything above 2100, 2106, it is basically a sell. Uh, the moving averages apart from the slow ones are very flat. They haven't really done anything all week. Uh, in the weeklies, we have actually done a bit of a doji. Um, we have, and, but does it mean anything? Potentially, but we, we just don't think that it's very, very significant at the moment. We have this moving average support, which comes in at 2060. So basically what the market is telling you, if I bust 2083, 2085, I am probably going to 2060. Uh, but that is that. Um, we are not bearish of the S&P. We find it very, very hard to be bearish of something that makes us money when we buy it on a dip. So that's all we can say. Let's have a look at the dailies on a more zoomed in time frame. Exactly the same kind of picture. Uh, the moving average support comes in at 2085, 2086, and then below there's a band, band of moving average around 2065, 2067. If we have a look at the other contracts, the cash contracts, which are less distorted, we have a slightly bullish but overbought picture in uh, emerging markets. We try, if you remember, we were trying to buy 3150. It never quite got there. It made a doji and reversed straight up. Friday, it actually closed up. So this is a um, so this is a bullish configuration, although it's getting quite overbought, and it'll probably try and close this gap to around 32.28, 32.30 next week. Uh, but it just shows you that there is support, a very good band of support around here, 32.85. So. Is the S&P going to go down without the emerging markets? No, not really. Um, is it going to go up hugely on the back of a 1% move in emerging markets? Probably not. Um, steady as we go. ACWI closed up on Friday again. 
Um, this is a consolidation market. We can draw these lines here at uh, 56.44. It's very well supported around those levels. Um, it That's the kind of level that acts as a swing. We will probably now go and retest the top around 58.06. Uh, are we going to bust it though? We very much doubt it in the next few days. The uh, the transports are more bearish than the S&P. They try to make a lower um, a lower close on Friday. They failed back in the range. We have very good resistance up here at these tops. So this is a again a market which is in uh, in consolidation. That's all that can be said for it. It's definitely not a bullish picture. We need much more from the transports if they're going to lead us. Um, NYA, all the stocks. Again, this is a not a bearish picture. Uh, the uh, the five and the eight and the ten day uh, exponential moving average are catching the lows very well. Uh, the 200 day moving average is still trending lower. So we could have a move back up to 10,622, which would probably coincide with a test in the S&Ps of the 2120, 2130 area, which were the previous all time highs but we doubt that it's going to um, do much more than that for the time being. Um, the, the techs very well supported on the hourly basis and on the daily basis. They are not coming off the uh, they're not breaking the 10 day moving average, which is extremely important. And that if it does, this will be significant because the text will have to lead, which we will show you later. If we do go below the uh, 4483 area, 4480 area, that will probably incite a move down towards the 44. 03 area, which is a 2% move, uh, which will probably elicit a 1% move or 1.5% move in S&Ps. So we could have that move down towards the 2065, 2070 area in the S&Ps, uh, but that's only a possibility. Uh, all th I'm telling you all this to sh try to get you to understand how narrow the trading ranges are going to be. Uh, don't get bearish at the bottom. The uh, Any move down to here, we will be buyers. Any move up to the top here, even though it's new highs, we will be sellers. Uh, we are going to have narrower trading ranges. So um, if you want to, um, to trade this, you have to trade it for less ticks. You make 10 ticks in the, in, in the S&Ps, 10 handles, you've done extremely well. Uh, you can see how narrow the Bollinger Bands are. You can see how much support there is below. Um, it's very, very, very unlikely to, to, make, to start making sustained move, moves lower. The moves lower will be shallow and they will be bought. Uh, on an hourly, have another look. We have the 200 period moving average. Look how well it catches it. The market spikes, it comes straight back up. Um, it's not a bullish configuration per se. It's a market that will keep on doing this until it decides on a more sustained direction. Uh, that is not going to happen in the next few days for a variety of reasons. If we move to the uh, European markets, which are more bearish, they're only relatively more bearish. Um, this is the DAX cash, and this is the 200 period moving average, which is positively sloped. And you can see that for all the kefuffle on Friday and all the bearish action, it's really done nothing. 
uh, to damage the internal picture. You are still buyers at these kind of ranges around the 96, uh, around the uh, 9,950, 60, 70, so just below 10,000 for bounces, which should prove quite shallow now. All the market has done, really, if you have a look at this, is come back and fill this gap and actually closed all right. Um, we think that any bounce up towards this level of 10,200 again is going to be sold for further moves down towards the 10,000 area. But again, these are narrower ranges than we have had in the past. We are in for probably a week of extremely narrow ranges uh, for a variety of reasons which we'll, we'll, we'll explore. Uh, so don't get overexcited on the downside or on the upside in any of these markets. Same thing on the hourlies in the DAX. We're coming back towards the bottom of a range. We are at the bottom of a range. Uh, that is a buy. Um, so that's all that can be said for it. We will be trying to buy it here next week again uh, for a bounce back up for, a, for another leg down. This is probably a you know an ABC correction and that's all there is to it. Uh, it should now consolidate in this kind of area together with the S&Ps before he makes the next move, which probably will be to the upside. But there you, there you have it for the time being. Stocks, same picture. It's done absolutely nothing to change the technical picture that we are in a range with around 3,100 of the top and these lows here as the bottom around 2,870. So we are somewhere in the middle of the range. We have room for small rallies and small dips with 2,960 being some kind of a pivot point. Uh, we would like to buy it against 2,960. Uh, for bounces and if it closes below it then we will shorten reverse but the ranges again I think will be lower uh, will be narrower and unfortunately that is the market that we have um, cash stocks again the same picture until we take out these levels around 2900 which we won't because of the Bollinger Band configuration, which is now narrowing, we think it's very unlikely that we're going to have a sustained move lower. Uh, the 200 moving day average and this channel basically contain moves up to 3,100. So we are telling you 3,100 is the top, 2,950 is the bottom uh, within, within the next 30, 40 ticks. It's a buy area for another leg higher. Now, having established that we are in ranges in all the markets, the spreads between them will actually be determined by King Dollar. Note so much King on Friday because it fell back from into the channel that he was trying to break out of. But basically, this picture is not bearish until it closes below 96.63 on a weekly basis. We just can't really get bearish of it. We all that can be said is that it's in a consolidation phase, which might last several more weeks. It's potentially a bearish configuration, but it's not one yet, and we will not anticipate. Uh, a breakdown in the dollar. A lot of money has been lost trying to anticipate this kind of a break. All we think the market has done is get overbought at these tops and then all the all the people who were long got basically dumped out on Friday. Uh, that's all that's happened. This kind of area, 9360, 
is going to be very, very good support. Uh, we will definitely be looking to uh, go slightly long at these levels for a decent bounce back up. So even that tells you that the um, movement between DAX and, um, and, and the ES is not going to be huge. We have probably got 80% of the move out of the way. So we will be covering our DAX shorts and we will be putting in uh, buy orders um, around this moving average again, uh, 10,040, 10,050. Uh, we think from there we will probably get a bounce back up to 10,200. So that is what we'll be doing. Now, the, having said that, we will let's have a look at the uh, at the euro well what the what did the euro do the euro got oversold it came back to support at the uh, 200 day moving average which is this thick line here and all it's done it's busted back through it will probably get now go to 141 1440450 uh, 114.80 but that is as far as we think it'll go. Uh, it'll probably take three or four days. The, uh, the, uh, the stochastics will get overbought and then it'll consolidate uh, between 113 and 115. That is the picture in the, uh, in the Euro. The If we look at some of the interesting contracts are basically euro against sterling. Euro against sterling on a weekly basis has been in a basically a descending channel for best part of seven years now. Um, this is the move last week back up towards the 200, 200 period moving average and the middle of the Bollinger Bands. Don't forget we have Brexit coming uh, in less than three weeks. So it is natural for the market in periods of uncertainty to go back towards the central uh, neutral levels before the, before the news comes out so we can react to the news. It looks to us like the next move in Euro sterling will be up towards the top of this channel which is around 81 82 um, that could happen in the next two or three weeks we could definitely at the very least uh, test the 80 level in anticipation of uh, the brexit referendum what does that tell us for sterling well for sterling that basically tells us that the market is not going higher than 147. Let's expand that. This is a weekly chart. As you can see, the keeps on spiking the Bollinger Bands and coming back, but still it's contained by the middle Bollinger, which is around the 143 area. And it still has huge support down below around the 140 level. So that is what it's telling us. It's telling us that uh, the euro might go slightly up and sterling might go slightly down, but it's still going to be contained, certainly for the next three weeks before the Brexit vote and before any trend might develop after that, between 147 and 140. Next week, we will be definitely sellers of volatility in sterling outside of those parameters. Uh, we find it very hard to believe, as per the note that we sent you, that sterling can move much more than another 3 or 4% on the downside. It can be nicely seen in the, um, in, in the dailies. 147 is the top. 143 for the moment is the bottom. It might go down to 140 uh, with sustained 
cascades, but we are still sellers of puts at 135 and below uh, up to the referendum day. We are not going to be playing uh, in, in the 130s for a month after the referendum, but we certainly will be playing by selling 135 to 130 puts for the uh, expiry one week after the referendum. We just don't think the market will have enough strength to bust through these levels. And also you have seen the uh, ECB and the Bank of England statements that they are ready to intervene in case of the Brexit. So we really think that volatility will come off and theta will do its work and in the next two weeks uh, volatility in sterling is a sell. We basically think that sterling will do much of nothing, will go up and down within a 2 to 3 percent range while the euro has a slightly upward bias and that takes euro ster sterling upwards towards the 0.80 level. So that's the way we look to play it. We look to play it by selling the huge volatility uh, and the put skew that we have. So we will be definitely doing that and advising you as we do it. Gold, well, it's done nothing wrong. It came back to the bottom of the channel and it's now gone back up. It is certainly supported. The, mo the, uh, the stochastics have turned, the RSIs have bounced from the middle. On the other hand, we think it'll definitely test the uh, 1260 area but even that will just elicit a compression and the 1260 area is going to become pivotal so it will trade if it busts with the 1260 it might go back up towards the 1300 but we don't see it making new highs in the next two or three weeks again everything everything every contract that we look at tells us that this is a trading market within a 2 to 3% trading range uh, inside of which you need to trade and make money. Oil, even that, it's doing nothing wrong. It's still in its small up phase. It might come back and test these moving averages around the 45 area, but basically it's compressing. Uh, Again, same thing. It, these are all markets which are compressing. But let us look at the fundamental reasons why they are compressing. Sorry, wrong one. Here we go. Let's go back to the Yardani Blue Angels. As you can see, they have started to turn up. That means expectations of earnings are beginning to rise. Are they beginning to rise at a huge pace? No, they're beginning to rise with a top around the 2130 area in the S&Ps. So that tells us that we could potentially test the 2130 area, but that all the downside will be contained. Uh, the 16s have started turning up, the 15s, all of them are turning upwards. So we have a trading range between 2130 and possibly 2050 at the very extreme. Why should that be the case? Well, consumer discretionary is turning upwards. That has room to run probably towards this 650 to 675 area which will drag the S&P higher. Consumer staples have nowhere to go. They are already vastly overbought so there's nothing there. Energy, there's nothing there. Look where these um, uh, Blue Angels are. It'll take a long time even with the price of oil going up to 55, 60, 65 dollars for these to turn and these to come back inside of them. It'll take literally quarters for that to happen. So don't expect the energy 
index to lead or to support the S&P very much. And this is really the problem that the S&P is facing longer term. Financials have started again to roll over. The, uh, the S&P really cannot rally that much with financials in the state they're in. It would not surprise me for these lines to get spiked, but for them to come right back. Healthcare, that can run. Industrials, much of a muchness. We are back to where we were in, uh, in 2014 and guess where the index is. It's very much back to where it was in 2014. Information technology, well, you know, that could push higher, but not very much because the earnings picture is very, very flat. It is completely unchanged for the past two years. Materials, they have turned back up. The index could go back up to about 3, 310, 320 which is where it was when the S&P was around the uh, 2130 area. Telecommunications, well, they could run a little bit. Utilities, that's about as far as they can go, maybe another one or two percent. So what is this telling us? This is telling us that one component of the index, a very important one, which is the financials, is actually a huge drag on the index and will continue to be a huge drag on the index. It cannot rally and make you know, sustained new highs with the financials the way they are. It can go to 2130, 2150, but it really can't do much more than that without the financials being firing on all cylinders. So the fundamental and the technical picture here are converging. They're telling you that this is a trading market which will probably make new highs. The lower levels will be supported and any break of lower levels will probably only go half a percent to a percent. So don't get bearish at the extremes. Don't get bearish at the bottom and don't get overly bullish on new highs. It's a trading market which will probably wedge. So what would we not be surprised to see. We will not be surprised to see a market which basically does this type of price action. It goes up, 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 makes new highs, one new high, two new highs, three, four, five new highs and then gives it all up within three or four days. Then tries, does a bear trap and does it again and then back down and then back up. We probably think that we are going in a, um, in this kind of trading range where we test the tops and we test the bottoms and we spit people out both ways. So can we go up to 21, 40, 50, 60 marginal new highs? Absolutely. Can we bust 2065 at the moment? Well, maybe, but then 2020 will definitely catch it. So if you ask us for the next three months, 2020, 2160 is your trading range with intraday spikes and then falls back to the moving average where people are going to get spat out and then retest the highs. That's the kind of market that we're in in the dollar until the dollar makes sustained closes on a weekly basis below 93.60 it is still not in a bear market uh, after 93.60 we have this area for a closing level which is 92.60 um, we would need to see closes below 93.60 and 92.60 to tell us that the dollar is going down, in which case you want to definitely prefer the S&Ps to the DAX or the stocks. And that is what the market is telling us. 
uh, narrow ranges, don't get long at the highs, don't get short uh, on breaks of the lower levels, uh, trade it short term, probably in larger size with tighter stops and keep on watching what the dollar does to tell you which contract you should be trading. If the dollar is in a bear phase, if you want to short equities, you want to do it in the Europeans and if you want to buy equities, you want to do it in the ES, you want to do it in the S&P because that will be the best risk reward that you can have. Again, coming back to Brexit, the, uh, we just cannot see how a market which is so hedged, everybody out there is now hedged, uh, all the big money managers are hedged by being extremely long of puts, how that market is going to go very far in the short term. Within one or two weeks of the referendum, this market will not have a move larger than two, three, four, or maximum 5% in sterling. We're absolutely convinced of that and we are ready to bet some serious money. The, uh, the 140 level will hugely support it. The 147, 148 level will be very huge resistance. The central banks here are going to be on our side. They're going to dampen all movements to the upside and to the downside. Don't forget that even if Brexit happens, they will take months to negotiate it. It's not like things will change overnight. It will take absolutely months for new conditions to be put into place for Britain's trading relations with the EU. And at the end of the day, even though Brexit has been voted, nothing could substantially change. Because if they get a deal like, say, Norway or like Switzerland, which is more than likely, why should, the, uh, why should sterling move at all? Uh, that is our question. Therefore, we are sellers of puts below the 135 region, 135 to 130. Volatility is extremely extended. And that is the only contract that we can see that there will be volatility in the next two or three weeks. All the others, volatility will be subdued. Let's have a look at the, the VIX. I mean, this is, what is this? Uh, this is a market which is going nowhere fast. It, that's all that, that can be said. 12 and a half is your bottom and that is probably where we'll be trading once the um, uh, if we spike the 2130 2140 area in the s ps and this kind of area 1680 to 17 is a top and this is where we will be if ever we uh, we get down to 2020 2030 2040 again that is all that can be said for uh, volatility at the moment Again, at the risk of repeating myself for the fifth time, uh, trading market, not positioning market, uh, act accordingly. Thank you.